Nothing. Think back to the beginning of 2020. Do you remember what life was like? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Good to go. Everything about life seems so normal. But there was this one thing on the news. Breaking news tonight. The first case of a deadly new virus has been confirmed in the United States. Our investigator... When I first heard about the virus, I honestly didn't give it much thought. But then a few weeks later, at the end of March, there were some times where I felt just like a little tightness in my chest. And that lasted for a couple days. And I got what felt like a sinus headache, which I found interesting because I didn't have any other sinusy things going on. And um, the funny thing is, is I left the house um, and we like went to get in the car. And I said to Chris, I was like, does it, does it smell funny out here to you? And he's like, oh, I'm so stuffed up. I couldn't smell a thing. And I was like, it smells like poop. Like it kind of smells like poop out here. It was just like, we kind of laughed about it. And then, um, when I ran into the pharmacy and I came back out, I noticed the same thing. It was like the air to me smelled like I, there was like a dog that had pooped or something. And I was like, well, this can't be like on my shoes because I didn't notice it inside the building. I just think the air smells, which I just found super weird. And then at dinner that night, as I'm eating it, I thought, huh, the only thing I can tell about this meal is that it's spicy. I had no taste other than that whatsoever. I started to kind of Google COVID, no taste and smell kind of, and started seeing these things of like, hey, this could be an early sign. And on that Sunday, I, Chris and I were on a walk and I was like, I think I have it. I think I've got Corona. I'll blow and you turn the lighter off at the same time. Three, two, one. Yay! <laughs> so I'm Chris a.k.a. Krista's husband, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. And like most filmmakers, pretty much all of my work came to a screeching halt once the pandemic hit. So I had basically just been sitting on the couch for two weeks doing absolutely nothing. And then all of a sudden, Krista's going in to get COVID tested. The filmmaker part of me really wanted to film this, but then the other part of me was like, I should probably just be a good husband right now. <laughs> and then I started thinking like, what if she gets really sick and what's gonna happen to her? Ultimately, I decided that I would just be there to support her. And then just to be productive with the rest of my time, I'd start making some filmmaking tutorials or something. But then I ran into a little problem of my own. All right, check, check, check. Testing one, two. Testing one, two, three. Hey everybody, hey everyone. Hey everybody, hey everybody. My name is Chris Francis, Chris Francis. And in this video, I'm gonna try to answer the question. And with the new 6K, <coughs> with, <coughs> with the in, <coughs> and then with both, <coughs> and then with both, <coughs> And you'll see the, jeez. <laughs> so Krista ended up testing positive, And then when her doctor said that we should assume that I probably have it too, I was like, that's it. We're filming everything. Where are we going, babe? We're going to get Rona tested. Well. I already did. You are. Do you think you're cooler than me? Because you already have the grin. I mean, maybe. <laughs> I am number one. <laughs> All right. Right now we are driving down the test, down the test, down the street to get my COVID-19 test because this lady right here. Yours truly. Already has it. And I'm feeling a little left out. Ain't that um, the truth. Right now we're doing a, going to a drive up testing. I went with Krista when she had this done yesterday, so I know what they're gonna do. I'm not looking forward to it, because they're gonna jam, what is it, a Q-tip? Like a long, yeah. 
like a well, Q-tip thing can't. up my nose yes. to the back of my brain because that's I guess where the COVID likes to hang out. Yeah. Feels like they're scratching your brain through your nose. Hi Monica, just letting you know that Chris Francis um, is Organa. here for his drive through swab. We're parked in the back by the table. All right, right now they're testing uh, the car next to us right now. Let's see how she handles the nasal swab. Oh wow, she stayed up. She stayed up her nose like legit like eight seconds. <laughs> so true story, last year, um, last year I got the regular flu and they did one of these nose swabs for me literally probably was up in my nose for like half a second and i legit like thought i was gonna pass out like i hyped myself up beforehand and i got so nervous because she said that she was gonna tickle my brain that i legit like had to take a 10 minute break and drink some water and sit up so needless to say i'm not a very tough person so we'll see how this goes Yep, that's Hi, good. nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as so well. First, I'm gonna take your heart rate and oxygen level, okay? okay. Let's see. Okay, so it's not very comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it's gotta go pretty far back into the nose in both sides. Okay. Okay. You can do it. You'll be great. It may make you cough or sneeze. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I know. I was trying to hold the hold back That's the sneeze okay. and the cough. Woo. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, stay home. We um, Tess will come back in forty-eight hours, and then we'll give you a call on Friday and let you know the okay. results. Perfect. Cool. Thank you so, so much. much. Really Thank appreciate you. it. Um, well, I think you'll have the camp that's like, I'm ready to be back. And then I think you'll have the camp of like, do we have to go back yet? I'm still fearful to be in groups with people. Yeah. Yeah. So when I suspected that I had COVID, I had to email HR at work and they sent an email out basically like shutting down the office. No one could get access. And because of my role in the office, I, I'm the office manager. I kind of know what's going on. Um, a lot of people immediately started reaching out to me of, oh my gosh, do you know who it is? I'm worried. I think I might have come in contact with them. You know, all this. And I was just like, oh my gosh, like people are panicking. I don't want to tell them it's me. Like I was, I was so worried that people would um, like tr like discriminate almost that like you you are you're the bad guy like you have it um I was like scared and emotional that like people people were gonna find out and point the fingers that like you're the one like this is this is your fault hello hello how are you doing I'm doing okay how are you Good. Um, so your swab came back and it was positive. All right. Join in the club, I guess. The CDC is recommending you meet three um, goals. One is no fever for three days, which you already have. Um, your symptoms are starting to improve. And then third, the CDC is saying seven days, um, no symptoms since seven days that they started. But I'm, I'm recommending seven days symptom free. Okay. Um, that makes sense. All right. Stay healthy. Stay safe. Okay. Thank you for your time. Okay. Bye. Yep, bye. Oh, I kind of got nervous. Right? It kind of feels like, oh my gosh, what if I don't have it and something else is wrong with me? Yeah. Well, at least there is clarity. We live in an apartment complex, which 
means we have shared laundry. So out of being very careful, we decided we didn't want to use our laundry room um, because you got to touch a lot of things in a laundry room. And so I'm doing the necessities, socks and undies in my bathroom. So we've been stuck in our little one bedroom apartment for almost two weeks now. And luckily we had some friends bring us some groceries and I was able to get some more cough medicine uh, because that's the only way I can fall asleep these days. Basically every night I cough my head off basically until I gag because I can't breathe. And then I get up and take cough medicine to get drowsy and then I fall asleep. Um, so not, uh, not the funnest times. Um, and I'll admit, I don't want to complain, but being stuck inside is getting really boring. But, uh, anyways, I did come up with a little idea on how we could have a little bit of fun. Make sure to subscribe for another episode of Can Krista Taste This? And here's our host, Krista. Now let's meet our contestants. Onion, sour cream, raw ginger, and Jim Beam Kentucky Fire. All right, first up, the onion. Nope. Oh, this is disgusting. It's sour cream. Could be yogurt, could be pudding. Oh, now that's just gross. Can't taste it at all. <laughs> Look out, here comes the fire. Bottoms up. Kind of burns my lips, but I can't taste it. And now for your favorite redheaded root, it's ginger time. Okay, whoa. So that one is very spicy. <laughs> it has no flavor at all, but it's very spicy. Wow, whoo, cool. I like that one. Whew. Whew. Wow, hot. And the winner is Ginger. Make sure to subscribe for another episode of Can Krista Taste This? So we've never done an Instagram live before, but we decided we're going to try it out tonight. We had a lot of friends reach out today with messages and questions, so we thought it'd just be easier to answer them all in one place at one time. And also since we haven't had a date night in quite a while, we thought maybe we'd have some fun with it too. Getting ready for our Instagram live. Crystal looking good in the lights. Technical looking at our fancy shoes. All right, we're live. Hi everybody. So this is my wine, but because I can't taste anything, I'm just drinking water. It's if I go, I feel like it smells like poop out here. <laughs> <laughs> not saying that your olfactory senses start smelling poop, but anyway. It did burn. She went, like when you pee? Went up. I don't think it burns when I pee. Well, hopefully not. They're like when you're. I don't know what's going on right here. So let's answer some questions. Uh, M to the matter. Do you know how you were exposed first symptoms? We don't know who got the coronavirus who first. Who gave it to who first? Krista was actually probably more out and about than me. She went to the grocery store, yeah. she was at work, and exactly. Sarah, no, we, we had, neither of us had a fever. We yep. checked our temperature every single day, um, and the highest mine ever got was 98.6. So throughout this, the toughest part for me has been feeling like I don't have much of a purpose. And I'm going on day 13 of not being able to taste or smell anything. And I'm starting to wonder when the heck this is gonna come back. So the thing about not having any taste or smell, there's not really anything to tip you off when you wake up, whether you're healed or not. So. Lately, what I've been doing is testing it out with my coffee. This is the test. Wow. 
Wah, wah, wah. Nothing. So throughout this whole journey, I just felt like there's almost like no purpose that I can serve other than just keeping myself away from other people. And one thing that we've really wanted to do is we've wanted to be a part of the solution as much as possible. We're looking for where's the redemption in all of this. So we're really, yeah, just kind of seeking out those opportunities of how we can help and looking at the silver lining of, okay, we have it now. Like, okay, what can we do? Like, how can, how can we help? So I just saw this random tweet, like I don't even follow this guy. Somebody must have liked it or retweeted it. And so we reached out to him, shot him an email, and they sent us a form. Here in like 10 minutes, uh, we're actually having this uh, research company come out to take our blood uh, to do some, to help with the research for new testing, uh, to get new testing available for people quicker. Uh, and I'll admit, because I'm a Francis, I hate getting blood drawn. So I'm like trying to eat, drink, get my blood sugar up. Um, we may have a history of passing out while having blood taken. So trying to be strong. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm just looking for the blood man. Seeing if we can sneak him in. That's right. So unfortunately, uh, we live, my wife and I live in an apartment. So, uh, me and Krista are a little concerned that uh, our neighbors are gonna see some guy that looks like he's coming from the hazmat uh, ET scene into our apartment. And we're hoping that we don't freak everybody out. Well, think of all the people you're helping. Deliver the goods. Ready? Mm-hmm. All right, take a deep breath, hold it. Okay, that's it. How do you feel? Oh, I feel fine. Great. You okay? Yeah, okay. this is easy. I was just being a little... Such a pro afterwards. This is easy. All right, so we are actually getting ready to do a Zoom call with Kerry Gunn. He's uh, the CEO of this company called Genolite here in San Diego, and they are doing research on developing a 15-minute blood test for COVID-19, and that's what me and Krista got to give our blood to the other day. So we're just gonna do a follow-up and find out what they're up to. Hey, Kerry, how are you doing? Uh, good. You don't get the chance to do something this important that often, so. Totally. Uh, yeah, 20-hour days, seven days a week right now, but at least, uh, you know, you feel like it's worthwhile. Can you explain uh, the serology testing that you guys are developing and like how that's different than like what we did up down the road with the nasal swab and stuff like that? So the, the nasal swab actually looks for the virus directly. What we do is we actually look for the signature of the immune response that your body makes when it's fighting the virus. So we actually are testing real patient populations. You have people at home that have mild disease in all of the other clinical trials, only we're testing people with that are in hospitals with really, really late stage disease. They're so sick and they've got so many antibodies that anyone can develop that test. And so what you've done by volunteering is help us calibrate our test for those that are sitting at home, right? So um, by volunteering and participating, you've actually helped us develop what we think is really the best serology test out there. And since, um, you know, I've been on the phone with you know, the governor's office of California and people in the White House and people in, in all the major companies that are rallying to, to fight this. And I just, you know, the promising thing here is, is that if you knew the amount of innovation and dedication and work and what's going to be coming down the, the pipelines over the next couple of months, you'd actually be really inspired. Awesome. Well, thanks for doing it. And thanks for letting us be a part of it. We're trying to do whatever we can to help be helpful out of this thing. So yeah. your your testing gave us something to feel like we had a purpose for the last like week or so. Thanks for stepping up. Yeah. All right. All right. Take cool. Care. Thanks, Gary. That was pretty cool. Very cool. Like I feel like encouraged too. All right. So I actually have to take antibiotics. And these antibiotics have nothing to do with the coronavirus because my doctor actually thinks. I have a bacterial infection on top of my coronavirus. So 
I'm gonna take this, don't make fun of me. I have trouble swallowing pills, so I'm gonna take it with some food. Oops, I didn't think that through. Chew your food first before trying to swallow a whole thing of meatloaf. <laughs> So I'm going back in today to get retested and I figured I would do my doctor the common courtesy of trimming my nose hairs for them. That was for you, Doc. All right, so I can't get rid of this dumb cough. So the only way I can actually get back to work is if I can uh, prove that I don't have COVID-19. So I'm actually getting tested again to see if I'm clear of the virus. Yes. Hi, I'm just thinking about your index finger. Sure. I'm just going to get your pulse and your oxygen real quick. Yeah. How's your guys' today? Busy. Yeah, it's a, it's a little rough down <laughs> here, but... Yeah. Well, thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you. We appreciate it. Dungeon vibes. Dungeon yeah, vibes. that's what it kind of feels like. All right, it's going to tickle a little, okay? Okay, all done. Oh, good job. All done. Here's a tissue for you if you need it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Wow. So <coughs> that one hurt way more than the first test. She stuck that one so far up my nose. <coughs> it sounds like I'm going to have to do that maybe <coughs> again tomorrow because you have to have two tests 24 hours apart and have them both come back negative to officially prove that you don't have COVID-19 anymore if your symptoms haven't cleared up. How are you feeling right now, dude? Um, I'm annoyed, to be honest. It's getting real old, not being able to taste anything. I feel like when you're in quarantine, there's not a lot to look forward to other than maybe some good food. Multiple times a day, I go from looking in the pantry to looking in the fridge, looking in the freezer, trying to decide what the heck to eat that would satisfy me. The answer's nothing because I can't taste anything still. And it feels like a waste to like cook good food. It feels like a waste of money and a waste of time and energy when I can't enjoy it anyways. So I'm just here eating some yogurt. It's easy trying to remember what it tastes like. But after this, I'm gonna go back because I'm gonna look for something else because this didn't satisfy me. Back to the drawing board. Also, there's an abundance of trash right now because we're avoiding the trash. Because again, we have to go out multiple doors and touch a lot of things. The trash continues to pile up. This month has been pretty slim pickings. Most of my jobs canceled and everything, but I ended up getting one client that was gonna be a regular like weekly video shoot and that was gonna be able to keep my business afloat. Um, but then when we got <laughs> diagnosed with COVID-19, uh, pretty much for the last month, I've just had to give that job to a buddy of mine. So the one job that I had in a sense, I kind of lost just because of the virus. So as I look back over my finances from the last year, so many of my jobs were from out of town clients that were flying into San Diego to do a shoot. And 
uh, the more I think about that, the more those are probably going to go away. So I, I really don't know like what's going to happen financially. All right, uh, got a new test result. From what? Uh, from my nasal test yesterday. Uh, Turn roll, please. Click to see results. Well, the test was developed. Oh, not detected. All right. So I'll admit I was thinking that I was going to say that I still had it. Uh, that's good. So one test down, and I have to go back again today and get that thing stuck up my nose again. <laughs> So more good news, my doctor cleared me, so I no longer have COVID, hooray. And before Chris goes and gets tested again, uh, we're gonna make a quick stop at the hospital because we've been asked to do another blood draw for further development of the serology test. So we're gonna stop there first quick. All right, folks, got my official yellow sticker. It means I don't have a uh, fever. Really excited to be volunteering. Not excited to have to get my blood again. One, two, three. Talk. So what I'm gonna do here is get a little whole blood from your finger. I just want to fill this little well there sure. with enough blood from your finger. I saturated that pretty well with blood. Two drops. What does that do? It just buffers the solution so that it can start to travel up. This is the control. And that's your IgG and your IgM. So hopefully in you right now it's clear. Hopefully we'll get a line right under the control telling us that the test is valid. And then if you have IgG, we'll get a line right there. And you can see how it's starting to move. Oh, that's a shame. Okay. Take a little thermometer. And... Do you think if, if this test is not showing antibodies with me, do you think there's any way that I, just, I never got COVID in the first I'm place? wondering. So, or that you got it, but you fought it through a different mechanism called IgA. So what happens is there's some people who get COVID, uh -huh. the infection never gets all the way through the blood. So you don't get the blood IgM and IgG. You have just the, the cells from the respiratory lining coming and attacking the infection. And you get better without going into the blood and making antibody. Huh. So it's possible. Interesting. Yeah. All right. So we just both did Another round of blood testing. Krista, would you like to share the early results? I feel like you need to see my face for this. I didn't show the antibodies, and Chris did. Dun, 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 dun. I'm number one. I'm number <laughs> one. Which we thought was going to be the complete opposite. So yeah. now we're just more confused than ever. But I will add that finger prick test is not FDA approved. Yeah, so don't count me out yet. So that's actually why we're volunteering to help test the accuracy of those tests. So they're actually going to take our blood and send it to a laboratory uh, to confirm whether that was accurate or not. Yeah, fingers crossed. <laughs> so at this point, we don't know anything for certain. There we go, deep breaths, a little bit of a tickle. You're doing great. Good job, all done. <laughs> all right. Hopefully that was the, the last test that I've had to do. And <laughs> we can get back to normal life. I guess I can take this mask off too. That's it, folks. It's official. My second test come came back, um, and my value is not detected. So, 
That's uh, two results. So I officially don't have coronavirus. What's the first thing you're going to do? Oh, man, if I wasn't so tired, the first thing I would do is go to my favorite coffee shop right now. It's 11 a.m. on a Saturday, but I'm actually just super tired. I've been getting like pretty bad sleep during all of this. Uh, and so I think that's going to have to wait for another day. I'm just going to continue resting at home. And But it's good to know that I can get out of the house now without killing anybody. So... So we got a call with the opportunity to participate in a smell study about how COVID affects people's smell. And I'm the perfect candidate. So Chris and I both got a packet. The smell identification test. Please read these instructions carefully before beginning. Beginning with page one of this booklet, use the enclosed pencil to scratch the brown label from left to right several times. See picture. This will release an odor. Do not over scrape the label. Okay. This odor smells most like, oh my gosh, gasoline, pizza, peanuts, or lilac. All right, here we go. Can you maybe whiff one of these just to see if there is a smell? Is that cheating? Does that smell like anything to you? Yes. Okay, you're for sure smelling something? I'm for sure smelling something. Did it, was it what I picked? Was it me? And Krista for sure has the wrong answer. Oh, no! All right, so I'm joining because I'm very curious to see how wrong Krista is. This odor smells most like banana, garlic, cherry, motor oil. Oh, this one is so easy. One, two, three, cherry. Banana. It's for sure 100% banana. One, two, three, cola. Mint. Three, two, one, clove. clove. <laughs> Ah, I can smell clove. Three, two, one. Leather. leather. I'm yeah. getting better. There's smell. It's coming back. Book one, complete. Book number two. Book two. I'm Dr. Carol Yan, and my team and I are studying smell loss with COVID-19. You know, our initial studies with COVID-19 is finding that the majority of people have smell loss to a certain degree. And the most of the people who have smell loss, it's actually profound. It's not subtle at all. So it goes from a, like a 10 to a zero. Fortunately, most people do get their sense of smell back, at least most of it. Um, and usually the time period's around two to four weeks or so. But unfortunately that leaves about a quarter of the people who haven't had their smell come back yet. One of the things we know that works if you have loss of smell is if you go and buy some essential oils or um, even household items that are really familiar to you that are really smell really strong, like coffee is a good example. And at least twice a day, just bring them very close to your nose and practice taking nice slow sniffs and smelling them deeply and thinking to yourself, I know what coffee smells like. Which is true and I can actually get a little Hint of that. The idea is that you're training your nose to be able to smell an odorant again and training the nerve fibers in your brain to regrow not only the cells but also redirect it to the right place in the brain so your brain can remember what the smell smells like. And we found that if you keep this up for about six months or so that people have shown some progress. So, you know, there's definitely still hope for Krista um, in getting her smell back. But I will say that as time goes on, that hope is a little bit less. And there is gonna be a subset of people, unfortunately, that we think will not get their sense of smell back. And that can be quite devastating.
All right, so our journey is starting to wind down here. It's been eight weeks since Krista lost her smell and taste. And I'd say right now her smell is like maybe like 20% back. And her taste, unfortunately, is still like, I don't know, zero, maybe 1%. Um, but that's not keeping her down though. Uh, she's actually getting ready to do something really cool. So I'll have her uh, share that with you real quick. What are you doing, man? Uh, yeah, I just filled out my application um, with the blood bank to donate, um, they call convalescent plasma. I'll have the antibodies that um, will be immune and help fight this. Um, so they're able to take my plasma and give it to patients that are like in critical condition and they're seeing like success with that. So filled that out. So excited about that. Good job, babe. I'm proud of you. So yeah, the, having COVID-19 has not been the funnest thing in the world. But, uh, you know, when life gives you lemons. Hi, this is Krista. Hi, Mrs. Francis. This is Krista with Farming Clinic. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to let you know um, that Dr. Crumman got your results from the test from the lab, uh -huh. and she said that the lab confirmed exactly what we got, which was positive IgG for your husband and negative IgG for yourself. Interesting. Okay. So, what does that mean? Okay. so, 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 what does that mean? That I don't have the antibody? Exactly. That's is ha, is it a thing that you can develop the antibody and then it disappears? Need to find out. It's I'm sorry, you cut out. Are you still there? Turn your Bluetooth off. Okay. I'm sorry, can you say that again? You cut out. Do Dr. Perlman said that you can have a different form of antibodies uh, named IgA. Got it. Okay, interesting. And those disappear. Interesting, because, yeah, I did a... They kill the, dis the disease and then they disappear. It, okay. Wow. Okay. Um, well, thank you for calling and for the information. You're welcome. Have a right, bye. Well, that's not good news. A medical oddity. My antibodies disappeared, maybe? Interesting. Yeah, that's weird. Well, I'm not a superhero anymore. All right, babe. Tell me what's up. So I just got off the phone with the doctor that did the most recent antibody test. And... She confirmed what the quick test showed that I don't have any antibodies, um, which is really disheartening to be honest, because um, that means I'm pretty much back to square one, I guess. Um, I'm assuming I don't have the antibodies. I could get it again. Um, and I feel oddly emotional. Um, also, I can't donate plasma. Um, I was really looking forward to doing really practical way to help people that are in much worse conditions um so i'm gonna call the blood bank um and just let them know the situation and yeah they have to cancel so it's a bummer Cause that felt like the most like actual good thing that I could do out of this, you know, give my strong antibody plasma to, you know, those in ICU fighting. So it's just, yeah, disheartening that I can't do that anymore. And then I'm just back to being like everybody else wondering when they're going to get it. Uh, I've got an appointment for 12.30. 30 yes sir. If I can borrow your full ID, please. Um, when's the last time you had somebody pass out while donating plasma? <laughs> 
I have never personally witnessed anyone donating plasma and then passing out. Okay. Well, I might be your friend. <laughs> no. He's not in danger because of those things. All right. Have you ever donated there. blood? Anything? So, despite my fear of needles and giving blood, and I really didn't want to do this, I wanted her to do this, uh, I am going to donate my plasma in Krista's place uh, so I can give my antibodies to people. Yeah. We're next. I wonder if they can just make me unconscious. Can you put me under? <laughs> all right, we are all good to go. All right. All right, so go ahead and give that a good three squeezes. Hold the fist, and you'll feel a stick in a sting, all right? Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead, relax. Easier said than done. <laughs> when Chris donates convalescent plasma, he'll be put in a chair with a special machine called a trema, and that trema will pull his blood out, separate it into components such as plasma, platelets, and whole blood, will take out the plasma that contains those antibodies, and return the rest to his arm. Then it'll be shipped to a hospital for a COVID patient that needs it. There's people on the other side of this infection that are really suffering in hospitals and they could potentially be made better with that plasma and so perhaps you were lucky enough to come through it but there's others out there that are really really sick and could use your blood donation. Almost patching the point in five, four, three, two, one, it just help somebody. So for the first 20 minutes, I was just trying to get through this. And then that changed when you said that I hit the 200 milliliter mark. Oh yeah, because that's enough to give to one person. Right, and that's when it really sunk in, you know, this is why we're doing all this. Yeah, so this is your, your donation here. Very good. Awesome, that's a lot, of, a lot of stuff. And this is nice, healthy looking plasma, by the way. So what are we doing? Keep it up. All right. <laughs> So how do you think that went? Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. I guess squeamish hypochondriacs, while slow and dangerous behind the wheel, still can serve a purpose. <laughs> really appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. When we first heard about this virus, we didn't know what to think. There were so many stories and so much conflicting information. And then we got it and it was like, now what do we do? For a long time, it felt like the only thing we could do was just stay home and stay away from everyone. And while we tried to make the best of our time at home, we wanted to do more than that. We don't know why we got this virus. Maybe it was by some divine appointment, or maybe it was just bad luck. But if someone makes a full recovery because they received my plasma, or if a new medicine or vaccine is developed from the research that we've been a part of, then I'm glad we got it. There's a whole bunch of scientists who are working really, really hard. Totally biased, I'm a scientist, but I think that science is the way that you get out of a pandemic. And the only way we're gonna do it is to look at people who've been infected. So that's gonna require people volunteering for study. You know, it might not help that person at all, but it will really help the next person, maybe to keep them from getting infected or in finding a new treatment. So people volunteering really does change the course of everything. In a time that's literally being defined by distance and isolation, it's been really encouraging to see the emerging community of people volunteering and feeling connected in that common cause. And the more the medical and science communities can learn about this virus, the sooner we'll have solutions for all of us. And what I've learned through our process is that the quickest way for us to all get there is for people to volunteer for research. Yeah, and this journey has really been a good reminder for us that we can't control almost anything that happens to us in life, including getting this virus. But it's a good reminder that what we can control is our attitude and mindset and how we're actually choosing to respond to those external things happening.
and it's really gonna take all of us to come together to beat this thing, but I absolutely know that we can do it together. Thank you.